this presentation is about gas rates, why we do them, how we do them, and what it is that you are actually checking. So why do we carry out gas rates? The gas rating test determines the amount of gas being burned by an appliance. The test converts the time it takes to pass a known volume of gas through a gas meter to an appliance into the heat input, that's the kilowatts of the appliance. Once you've got that figure you can then compare it to the appliance's data badge or the manufacturer's instructions because they will tell you what kilowatts the appliance should be running at. The main components that are being tested when you gas rate an appliance are the gas injectors. Now I'm aware that some people struggle to know what gas injectors are or how they work. They're very simple. They are bolts with a hole drilled all the way through. And what they do is they sit beneath the burner and they're the ones that spray gas to allow the burner to work correctly and be supplied with the correct amount of gas. Problems that you might encounter with them are that people have put the wrong injectors in, so the holes are the wrong size, or the holes themselves are blocked, or the holes have been enlarged by wear or by people poking down as they try and clean them out from a previous servicing. So what you're testing when you do a gas rate is the gas injectors. Now before you carry out a gas rate and in order to allow yourself to be accurate so that the only thing you are checking is the gas rate, you must carry out some other tests. Otherwise the gas rate is pointless. So you must already have carried out a tightness test, a working pressure test on the system, and a burner pressure test. Some appliances you can adjust the pressure of the burner itself and I'll explain to you in a minute how we do that but you must have carried out a burner pressure test if it's possible cookers for example you can't carry out burner pressure tests or many of them they rely on the main regulator to control their pressure but other appliances more complex appliances you can adjust the burner pressure rate inside the appliance because there's another regulator inside the appliance. So how to check the gas pressure of the installation. Now when you do your inlet pressure test the pressure at the inlet of any appliance is required to be 20 millibars. However, not all appliances require 20 millibars to operate. You're going to have to look at the MIs of the appliance and they will tell you the minimum pressure that the appliance can work at. Some of them can go as low 
as 14 millibars and they will still work correctly you'll still be able to get the correct burner pressure for the appliance look at MI's it will tell you the minimum pressure that can be delivered to that appliance so checking the gas pressure in installations remember you've got to do this before you do your gas rate otherwise your gas rate is null and void it's pointless if you're not getting the correct pressure through the pipework there's no point in carrying out a gas rate so before you carry out a gas rate you'll have to check and adjust the appliances regulator to its correct setting according to the MIs but before that you'll have to check the working pressure of the installation so what do you do if the working pressure of the installation is wrong if it's not working at 21 millibar give or take if it's running around at 13 millibars or 28 millibars well there's nothing you can do about that because that's the regulator on the meter and you are not allowed to tamper with that if the installation pressure is out of whack is too low or too high you've got to contact the gas provider so how do you actually check the working pressure of an installation and you should all know this your tutor should have shown you it you put your U gauge on the meter test point open the gas and turn on one appliance a boiler for example at full rate and then you just check the pressure if you're using a cooker to check the pressure not a boiler then you light three burners on full and the pressure should be 21 millibars plus or minus a millibar there's a quick picture just to remind you of how to check the working pressure of the installation all right three burners on a cooker 21 millibar at the outlet so the next thing you'll have to do is to check the appliance working pressure and make sure it conforms to the MIs first you'll have to connect a U gauge to the correct test point and the MIs will show you the location of that test point what you do then is you light the appliance at full rate and some of the more modern appliances have an engineer's rate you have to look in the MIs and it will show you what to do and the correct buttons to push to put it into an engineer's check um, rate which is full rate for the appliance All right. if it's range rated that means if it, a range rated appliance allows you to fit a, a boiler for example to a house to any house so if it's got three radiators in it you keep the burner pressure really low and that's fine if it's got 15 radiators you have the burner pressure really high and that will allow you to heat a big a big system like 15 radiators a bit of an exaggeration but that's the way it works the burner pressure controls how much heat the burner gives off if it's a range rated appliance it's got to be again at full rate so the correct burner pressure for each appliance is given on the data plate and in the manufacturer's instructions if the information isn't available if the for some reason there's no data plate and there's no MIs you can't do anything until you get a copy 
and they're the rules so here's a quick picture to remind you again I'm sure you've been shown how to do this uh, on the left hand side is what we call a zero a zero governor where you put the test put it on the test point run it and you get a zero reading on a U gauge and the other example is a multifunction valve found in a lot of the old boilers that you will be assessed on a, a lot of old open fluid boilers and a lot of modern boilers in fact uh, and there again are pressure test points but the manufacturer's instructions will show you exactly which burner test point to use so if you've got a fault for example excessive pressure loss at the appliance if you put your inlet pressure test on a multifunction valve and you can't get it above let's say 13 millibars but the pressure seems to be all right at the meter then you might have undersized gas pipes so somebody hasn't sized the pipes correctly and the appliance isn't getting enough gas the meter regulator might be incorrectly set but you should have found that already with the working pressure test or there's a blockage somewhere in the supply to the appliance if that's the case it's usually not a blockage it's a big dent in the pipework that will restrict the flow quite excessively so let's get on to the meat of it now how to calculate gas rates now there are two ways to calculate gas rates there's a complex way which involves knowledge of the calorific value of the gas and how to convert British thermal units to feet cubed it's a very complex and long-winded way of carrying out a gas rate but it's very accurate and then there's a simple method which is the method that most engineers will use when they're carrying out a gas rate I'll be showing you the simple method you're not required to know the complex method for your assessment or for your written exams and you will have questions on this so the first things first preparation make sure that all other gas appliances are turned off you're going to be taking readings at the meter if there's three appliances running the meter is going to be spinning around like a top and your gas rating is going to be all over the place because you're using the meter to measure the amount of gas being used so make sure the only appliance that is on during the test is the appliance you're testing switch the gas appliance on and let it warm up normally for 10 minutes so it's got to get up there to normal working temperature now a lot of appliances have thermostats fitted and what the thermostat will do is once the appliance gets up to the heat that you've set it will cut the gas off either to a pilot light or in the case of a cooker to the bypass rate so for your assessment what you must remember is this when it comes to doing your gas rate on your cooker you must carry it out with the oven door open if you close the oven door and let it run for 10 minutes it will drop down to the bypass rate and when you do your gas rate test it'll probably come out to two kilowatts or three kilowatts because it's only running on its bypass so you leave the door open so that the thermostat never gets hot enough to close the main gas supply off 
and switch on the bypass rate. So gas rate, oven, door open. We're also given a tolerance. Tolerances are there to allow for slight mistakes. If I did a, a gas rate, for example, a two minute test, I might flick my stopwatch at two minutes and one second. You might click your stopwatch at one minute, 58 seconds, and we're gonna come out with different results. So we're allowed a tolerance, an allowance, either side of the kilowatts that the manufacturer states the appliance should run at. And the rules that we're allowed are we're allowed it to be 5% above what the MI MIs tell you and 10% below what the MIs tell you is the kilowatt rating of the appliance. And to do this, you just do two very simple multiplications on the calculator on your phone. You take the kilowatt on the data badge and you times it by 1.05 and you write that down. And then again, the kilowatt on the data badge you times it by 0.9. So you times it by two different numbers, 1.05 and 0.9. This will give you two numbers, slightly, one will be slightly above the kilowatt rating and one will be slightly below the kilowatt rating. That is your range. Your reading must be inside that range. What I do when I was doing it with calculations, I look at the kilowatt input on the data badge. This one here is 31.3 because you always take the highest kilowatt rating and it's always the heat input, not the heat output, heat input. So we've got 31.3 here and I draw two circles in my notebook and then I write the kilowatts down between the two of them, like so. So this is 31.3 kilowatts. I then get my calculator out, and I times 31.3 by 1.05, and I times it 31.3 by 0 0.9, and I write down the two figures in the circle. So obviously we've got 33 kilowatts and 28.2 kilowatts. As long as my reading when I carry out my gas rate is between 33 kilowatts and 28.2 kilowatts, then the gas rate test has been passed correctly. So you're giving yourself a range. You don't have to be spot on accurate between those two figures is good enough. So how do we calculate the gas rates on an imperial meter? Here's the complex way of doing it. I'm not gonna loiter on this. It just involves the CV of the gas and British thermal units. The way to do it in your assessment and the way most gas engineers do it is they use a magic number and the magic number for this is 1096 so you time how long it takes for that dial you don't worry about the numbers on an imperial test you're only looking at the dial for the dial to complete one revolution, to go all the way around once, and you time how long it takes. So in this example, I'm gonna say it took one minute and 17 seconds. You convert however long it took into seconds.
so there's 60 seconds in a minute so 1 minute 17 seconds 60 plus 17 is 77 so one revolution when I in this test one complete revolution of that dial from where it started back to where it started took 77 seconds so what we do now is that's when we use our magic number 1096 and we divide 1096 by the time taken so 1096 divided by 77 seconds equals 14.2 and that's the kilowatt rating that we got during our test now remember this gives a gross result if the appliance itself is in net then you divide 14.2 by 1.1 and that will give you a net answer quite simple 1096 magic number divided by the time taken in seconds and the answer will give you your kilowatts metric meters are different they haven't got a dial on them you have to rely on reading the numbers and the important thing with this is and I've seen so many students fail because of this the comma that you see before the red numbers before the red block is a decimal point it's a decimal point so for this example here the gas has gone up by point naught one not by ten by point naught one because that's a decimal point you must remember that when you're calculating the accurate method I've written it there you can look at it you can pause the video and uh, say if you want to play about with that I'm not going to use that today I'm going to use the magic number for metric which is 323 so what we do is we measure how much gas is used in two minutes so you write down what the meter reading is at the start you run the appliance is running all the time you're doing this pick pick a time to, to go and click your stopwatch and then you write down the number or the amount of gas that's been used after two minutes and then you multiply how much gas you've used by 323 so here's an example if the amount of gas you used was 0.044 remember there's a decimal point there 0.044 you simply times that by the magic number 323 and that gives you 14.2 kilowatts very simple as long as you've done your preparation this again is a gross number if you need it in net divide it by 1.1 however the instructors must teach you how to calculate your gas rates yourself and that's how you do it however every single gas engineering book has got a chart in it that will tell you exactly what the gas rating is for any given scenario so this one here is the metric chart they all look very similar to this there are rows if you look there's actually one two three four rows there if you see where it says two minutes gas flow meters cubed there's actually four rows going all the way up you're only interested in three 
columns at, at a time. I'll show you this a little bit better by zooming in. See the first column says how many meters cubed of gas in two minutes. So this is a metric test. So let's say and, and again it's split into three rows because it's quite simple it's just there's a lot of numbers. So the bit that I've squared off there we're saying that in two minutes 0.066 of gas has been used and it tells you that that equates to 21.32 kilowatts gross and 19.21 kilowatts net. Very simple. You don't even need to do the calculations. When you're in your assessment, when you're in your exams, use the chart. You've got to know how to calculate if somebody asks you how to calculate, but you don't have to do the calculations. You've got charts in the book, use the charts. Far simpler, it takes a lot of the pain away. So here's an example of the imperial chart. Now that doesn't come out in, in gas used, that comes out in times taken, because remember the imperial is all about the dial going round. So let's close in on that a little bit. And it says time in seconds. So I've picked one at random here. It's saying that that dial went all the way around in 24 seconds. And it tells you there that that equates to 45.74 kilowatts gross and 41.21 kilowatts net. You don't even have to do any conversions. They're there for you. Use the charts. It's so much easier. And finally, what do we do if your gas rate is out? So you've got a fault, you've got incorrect gas rate at the appliance. If you've done all your other checks, it can only be an injector problem. So if it's low, it could be a blocked or partially blocked burner injector and you should clean the injectors. If it's low or if it's high, it could be that somebody's put the incorrect injector size in, in which case you check the MIs, they will tell you the correct injectors, check them against the ones that are fitted, they're only screwed in, they're very simple, and if, they've, if the wrong ones are in there, pop yourself down to the shop, because they stock injectors, get injectors of the right size, come back and put them in. It really is that simple, and then obviously retest it. The last thing here is the incorrect appliance or burner inlet pressure. Well, if you've done all your checks with your working pressure and your burner inlet pressures, that's not going to be a problem. If they were correct before you started, you can remove that from them. And that's why I say that gas rating is 95% a check of the burner injectors. I hope that's cleared things up for you. I hope you understand things a little bit better. You will get asked questions about this. And my experience of teaching is that a lot of you get taught this in bits and pieces, but nobody ever puts it together and explains front to back how this all actually works. So good luck with your exams and uh, I'll speak to you on the next video.